Hey guys, I'm Walter Pritikman, professional tennis coach, and we're here today to see how can we deal better with a high and really heavy topspin. So for that, we need to divide that in a couple of steps. We're gonna learn what is the topspin, what is the ball rotation there, what happens when the ball touches the ground, where is our best position to impact that ball, and the right technique for every different positions. Okay, so we can go right away and remember that the top spin is a ball that we hit it from the lower part, rotation forward and up, and the ball, it flies slow and it gains speed when it touches the ground. So what happens is basically this. The ball is gonna fly, it's gonna touch the ground, it's gonna deform, the, gr the ground is gonna give it back to us, gaining speed in the first couple of meters and then losing speed. So that's gonna give you a couple of good options for us to do. So we have two ways of facing that situation. Or we get the ball early on the rise, or we move back, we wait for the whole bird, all the curve of the ball, gets high, lower, loses speed, loses spin, and then we do another impact. So we can do some, uh, some examples of how to do this, this kind of shot. Karu is here with me. He's gonna help me with all of this, okay? Okay, so originally we had Walter coaching like he would do it in a lesson, uh, but the, the audio got a bit messed up. So I'm going to break down the routine we did step by step and, ho and hopefully you can follow along uh, and think about it the next time you practice. The reason high heavy balls are hard to deal with is, is because they often make us hit the ball outside of our stri strike zone, meaning that it's not within kind of like our waist or shoulder height. They, they usually get up above our shoulders. And the moment they, they are above our shoulders, you are not in good position. There's not really a way, a way around it. You're gonna have to deal with it and it's going to happen, but uh, ideally we want to be making contact between our I'd say like thighs and shoulder. Above the shoulder, it makes it a lot more complicated. So like Walter said earlier, there are two possible scenarios when you see a high heavy ball. You either go and take it earlier, so it doesn't bounce and go up enough to go above your shoulder, or you back up, let that ball go up, down, and back to the strike zone. So now I'm going to help you with both scenarios, uh, when you should go for either one, uh, how you should train it, how your racket should, you know, impact the ball, where it should go. So I'm going to break down both scenarios, starting with hitting the ball earlier. So if you want to hit the ball earlier, when you see a high heavy ball, there are a couple things that you need to look for. First, make sure that the ball allows you to hit the ball earlier. Don't just force it. I think a lot of people sometimes panic. They see that ball coming high. They'll try to take it earlier. The ball, they will be in the wrong position. That ball will still bounce over their their shoulders and all of a sudden you're taking the ball early, almost like hitting a half overhead forehand grip. It makes everything very awkward. So make sure you allow, the, the ball allows you to do it. I, I preach that a lot in the channel, like the ball decides what you can do with it. Uh, so you need to really look for a ball that allows you to take it earlier. Second, you have to be in good position. So whatever happened on the ball before the heavy ball that, that comes to you, so you might have been sent all the way to a corner on the court and all of a sudden the heavy ball is coming to the other side. If you just try to sprint from one side to the other and try to take it early, um, it's going to be hard to do. So um, you gotta be in good position, at least in a neutral position on the court to be able to maybe cut the angle, move, move diagonally and take the ball earlier. So once you see that, that the ball is allowing you to take it take it earlier and you are in good position, now we can move on to the technical side. Okay, so let's watch me here taking the ball earlier. Um, I want you to focus on the sequence of events that it happens here. So the first thing is feet really moving quickly to the ball. As I'm going, my feet are adjusting, creating good base, strong base, so I'm able to, to absorb that, that top spin that is coming to me with my body um, and able to, to really send the ball forward uh, with power. Now the second thing is that I want you to guys pay attention to and this is a personal preference It doesn't mean that it's for everyone is that I actually like to take my racket back you see from here to here um, I try to take it just a little bit higher The reason I do this is because I I personally like to be able to 
to extend my loop or you know my backswing a little bit when I see uh, a high ball. That's because I that's personal preference, but I want to take my racket a bit, little bit higher than the line of the ball. So we see where the ball is coming. It's a little bit higher than the line of the ball. My racket is still going to drop. I'm still going to hit from low to high, but I'm going to have a little bit more leverage to work with when working with that ball. If you guys pay attention here, my racket is still moving from a low to high, which is my third point. You still want to be hitting the ball from a low to high, even if it's a high ball, even if it's above your shoulder, this is where you're going to want to hit low to high and not allow the racket to move from high to low. Okay, and then if we just keep going here, you see the last thing is really having a high elbow finish. See, like my elbow is really, really high up here. So if we look at this emotion, at all of this emotion, you see those steps, quick steps, a little bit higher take back, hitting from low to high and making sure my body is going to the target and I'm finishing a nice high elbow and if we move on to the back and you see that the sequence of events is pretty much the same good feet moving to the ball a little bit higher take back so I'm able to continue my loop a little bit a little bit longer then I'll hit from, still from low to high you see here I'm still hitting from low to high on it the ball is going to move more straight, but my racket needs to go low to high because if it's not low to high, it will go straight into the net. And then a nice, good elbow finish, staying strong, high elbow finish, staying strong through the shot, body moving forward, and using that pace. I try not to hit too hard when I see that, that high, heavy ball. I try to just use the momentum of me and the body uh, moving forward, as well as the ball accelerating after a bouncing it, it bounces um, to create all the pace I need I don't need it need to swing super hard So now that we talked about having a ball that allows you to take it early, be in good position, and we watch a bit of the technical aspect of it, um, the last thing you need to think about is that if you are moving into the, into the court to take it earlier, you have to be aggressive. You're going to have to take a little bit of more of a, more of a risk because, you, because if you go into the court and you kind of soft, softly hit it to the other side, you're going to be in a bad position, kind of in, kind of like in no man's land inside the court. It's going to be easy for your opponent to put you in a tough position um, from, from that ball. So you got to make sure that if you go inside the court, you, you're going to be aggressive. Where you're going to hit it, it really depends on the point. I can't really say like go here, or go there. Typically, if you're going to step in the court and maybe go into the net, probably you want to go down the line, but it really depends on how the, the point's being played. The one thing you gotta understand, you gotta be aggressive on those shots. You're gonna have take a couple risks, and you're probably gonna make some mistakes out of those. So uh, don't you know get down on yourself just because you made a mistake or two or five. It's gonna take time for you to actually um, be comfortable with that ball. But just remember, you gotta be aggressive um, if you step in the court to take that high heavy ball. Okay, so now moving to the scenario where you need to back up to hit a high heavy ball. Uh, this can typically be where most players struggle and I know I struggled with it as well because uh, we can be a little bit stubborn into not wanting to allow, uh, not wanting to give court positioning uh, to the other player. Oh, it's a high heavy ball. I can probably just take it early and keep my uh, place near the baseline. But more often than not, uh, you're just going to make poor contact. You're not going to be uh, behind the ball the, the right way. So backing up, it's not a bad play, but there's a couple things that you need to to follow in, in order to hit the ball well when backing up. So like Walter said before, when we back up to hit the high heavy ball, we gotta 
allow enough space for the ball to bounce, accelerate, decelerate, and then get back to your strike zone. So the first thing you need to do is to move quickly backwards because um, if you take too long to, to actually move, recognize that the ball is high um, and it's probably gonna bounce high, you are going to get caught backing up but hitting back while you're backing up and maybe with the ball above your shoulder and that's the worst case scenario here the best case scenario is for you to back up quickly you quickly back, get back behind the ball so you're able to actually you know have a, a little bit of time to see the ball getting down to your strike zone and then you're going to have your body behind the ball so you're able to because you're so far back, you need your body uh, to uh, help you push that ball nice and long back to the other side. Because very often, I think we back up and then we hit backing up and that ball just lands short, kind of sits up and maybe your opponent takes advantage of that. At the end of the day, it usually starts with footwork. Uh, I think we often get caught with like the technique and we think that there's going to be a, a different way to hit this ball, but it's not really. It's pretty much the same swing you might change you know the the path of your ball it might be less you know linear not linear but like the the, the curve of your ball might have to be a little bit high to high up just so you're able to um, send the ball deep back on the court and get get back into good positioning but it, it really starts with footwork backing up quickly and then using your legs using your hips using pretty much in your entire body uh, to push that ball back and not allow this high heavy ball to bully you so again let's cu cut to uh, some slow motion shots that I'll, I'll break it down for you guys uh, so you can see what I'm talking about okay so here's the sequence of events when you have to back up to deal with the high heavy ball the first thing is that recognizing that ball is going to push you back and it's okay for you to go back but you have to move quickly backwards you see my feet you know I went from this position here to here really quickly and you have to be able to again move fast from there so you're able to after you move you are you're able to have this sort of base here you're able to have a nice solid stance um, if you pay attention to the ball here it will go up a bit more and then it starts decelerating a bit back to my strike zone I'm able to plow through the ball, really push my body forward. See the racket going up again. Can stress this enough, have that, that racket moving from a low to high position into the ball, entering and exiting the ball from low to high, all the way around. And then the nice elbow, high elbow finish again up here. Okay, so if we watch a couple more here, you see that that sequence of events happens over and over. I back up, I load, I push. Yes, I get a little bit of air. I'm not saying my my way is the perfect way. I'm just saying that at least the footwork to get yourself behind the, the ball here. Load really got, got my back all the way around here. That one was probably the best one. You see how I, I backed up hit, twist it all the way around, call that the twister, but really push, got my hips around, you see my hip got moved all the way around here, and that's going to give me strength to, to really push that ball deep to the other side of the court. And if we move on and watch some of the back ends, you see that the sequence of events is really similar. First, really get, you got to back up so you're behind the ball and you're able to have a good load, push the ball up. Remember, you're going to be far back from the court, even though it seems like in a disadvantage, you can actually go at it because you're so far back, you have that space to hit the ball all the way deep to the other side. So don't be scared of like really swinging out um, and creating a lot of, a lot of power and extension through the shot because that's going to help you send the ball all the way back deep on the court but again here same on the back end feet going backwards first that racket just a bit higher than the line of the ball if you see here and then slowly it drops 
I push, that ball is get, gets back to my strike zone where I wanted to hit it, and I'm going to lift it all the way up, send it nice and deep in a great curve, um, so I'm able to have good depth and get back in good position on the court. All right, and the last thing I wanna talk about in this scenario where you're backing up is where you should hit the ball. Now, again, I don't wanna, tennis is nuanced. Don't ever follow someone saying, that it's just, you have to hit here, you have to hit there. But typically, uh, the two best scenarios is going hard middle, you know, heavy, heavy middle, hopefully deep, or cross court. Gives you, gives you a little more court to work with, um, more time to actually get back into good court positioning and not you just stay super far back. Um, so hard middle, hard cross. Um, remember, you're backing up. So if you're backing up, even though you might not be in great position, you can actually go at it. You've got a lot of time for that ball to travel um, and you shouldn't worry too much about missing long. So um, hard middle, hard cross if you can. Um, again, depends on really uh, how the point was played, but uh, those are my two favorite spots on the court to hit if I have to back up. But again, it always depends on the point that's being played, your opponent's weaknesses, all those things. So this is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I know these high heavy balls can be really hard to deal with. Uh, I don't like them myself <laughs> still. So uh, don't, don't be hard on yourself because uh, you think you should be so much better at it. Rafa has won 20 Grand Slams hitting high heavy balls. It is a tough ball to deal with. Most people like prefer playing from the waist high, chest high. Uh, so it is tricky. You're gonna have to go on the court Again, don't reinvent the wheel. Just have someone feed you high heavy balls. Have, some, have someone hit high heavy balls to you and try to find really what works for you. Um, the footwork, uh, how to get to recognize the ball coming off the racket quickly. And I think you, you're gonna have a much better time uh, dealing with it and you're not gonna be so scared of it when you see it. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps the channel. Uh, visit my tennishq.com bunch of new articles good great content there uh, we got racket profiles all the stuff that you need at my tennishq.com river just hit the tripod i don't know <laughs> where the camera is pointing out um we got merch we got the tennis warehouse and amazon links down below let us know in the comments um if you try everything that i said today if it helped you next time you're on the court and i'll see you guys in the next one